Depuis toujours, la vie des hommes est décidée et contrôlée par trois sœurs. Elles se font appeler les Moires. La plus jeune des sœurs offre la vie aux humains. La seconde déroule le fil de leur destin. La troisième, la plus âgée, y met fin. La cadette, soucieuse d'accomplir correctement son devoir, insuffla la vie à de petits êtres capables de l'épauler. Depuis son château, il tisse perpétuellement le fil de la vie afin de le répartir vers le monde extérieur. Ces êtres, démunis de conscience, travaillent sans relâche pour cette puissante moire. Mais vous, vous avez un pouvoir particulier, le pouvoir de choisir pour l'un d'eux. Cependant, êtes-vous suffisamment courageux pour vous opposer aux sœurs qui décident du sort des hommes Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the 2021 Rookie Awards interview series. My name is Christina Ryan and I'm the host of the interview series. Um, I'm also a senior texture artist at Industrial Light and Magic and a judge on the Rookies panel. Uh, so that was the, that trailer was the work of, um, we have both Melanie and Angie online tonight um, and I'm really excited to uh, interview them and to meet them and to, uh, yeah, like just hear about their story and how they created it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, add them both on. So I'm going to go ahead and welcome Angie and Melanie. Thank you so much Hi. for joining. You're welcome. Uh, I was just hoping, um, so we have both of you on tonight. Um, I, uh, both of you played a really important role in creating this game. Um, you guys were the, you know, the winner of our game of the year and what a fantastic game. Um, I was hoping you could start off by telling us just a little bit about yourself and perhaps your contribution to the game. Uh, Melanie, sure. would you like to start? Yeah. Uh, so my name is uh, Melanie. I'm um, I'm a character artist, and uh, for the project uh, I work on all the characters uh, in Soul Weaver. So they were mostly two, but took uh, still a lot of time to make. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm um, I'm still a character artist at this time, and I really enjoy this. And I've been uh, studying in New Age, and uh, I think that's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. How about you? Um, so my name is Angie. Um, I'm Spanish, but I studied in France in New Age with uh, Melanie. And right now I'm still working on 3D, but I'm not an environment artist anymore. That's what I did for the game. I was an environment yeah. artist. Uh, so now I work uh, for automotive company. Working yeah. on 3D, but it's for cars now, <laughs> which is quite different than the game. Yeah, no, I can. I mean, like all the skills are totally transferable, but it's, you know, yeah, definitely a different industry. Um, so I was hoping um, maybe you could share a little bit about um, perhaps your school that you studied at and um, yeah. Uh, do you have something in mind specifically? Do you want us to like just yeah, present yeah. a little bit of the school? So maybe you can start with the name of your school and um, how long <laughs> the was and what sort of things that you studied. Was it just video games or um, was it? 3D in general, like visual effects as well. What, what was uh, the focus? So, yeah. if I remember correctly, I think Melanie, you did the five full years of other school, right? With the first yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So maybe you can talk about that because I. Yeah. I, okay. I okay. Okay. Yeah. So basically, uh, so New Age is a, um, it's a school specialized in uh, visual. So um, it's in uh, game arts, but also in. Um, 3D animation, so it could be in movie and visual effect, all this kind of stuff. And then recently, we have also a special course in uh, concept art. So it's something really recent, but uh, it's all collected about uh, visual and stuff like this. So basically, New Age, it's uh, a five-year course. You have one year where you make uh, mostly traditional art. So it's about painting, it's about uh, modeling, um, drawing, like really the basic stuff you need to learn uh, before going to a computer because it's basically the same thing but uh, then you go on digital but like the method that's like all the same 
And then you have uh, three general um, course. So then you learn like how to use Photoshop, how to use a, uh, so in UH we use 3D Max. Uh, mm -hmm. So all the stuff like this, like just to learn all like the vocabulary, how to use uh, the, the software, make some render and stuff like this. Then you start to learn about uh, making render in V-Ray or uh, in Real Engine, some stuff like this. And then you have so two years of specialization. So it's either game arts where here you learn about like uh, creating uh, all the assets for a game. So it could be character for environment, uh, visual effects. We also recently we added Houdini to our pipeline, which is really, really cool. Um, and also you have also another course, another specialization. So that I talk about, but we both we didn't do. It's um, in uh, film animation uh, stuff like this. So it's um, we make like cartoon or stuff like this, and um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's not my specialization. So I'm really maybe a bit bad at talking about it. And uh, and also the other one, which is the concept art, where I think yeah. it's a bit more popular. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, wow. So it sounds like you've learned pretty much all of the skills from start to finish. You sort of went through the whole pipeline and it sounds like you got a really broad um, broad spectrum of things that you've learned. So I think that sounds that sounds fantastic. Um, that's what we sort of look for in like good schools where they do teach you all of those skills. Um, and in, I just thought I'd just in the mention as well, um, guys, for those guys in the audience watching, if you have any questions whatsoever, um, just feel free to shout out and I'll, I'll pass them along. Um, so at what point did you decide or both of you decide that, you know, this was what you wanted to do as a career? Yeah. <laughs> um, I did thought a lot about that question. And uh, honestly, for me, it didn't, I didn't decide it. it I didn't. I didn't woke up one day when I was <laughs> 17 and I was like, oh, I want to be a game artist and I want to yeah. make video games. It was very naturally, um, it happened naturally because I was very an artistic kid, as you would say. Maybe I used to draw every day and I was very creative. I suppose I was into arts and crafts and all that. But my parents uh, were more like, maybe a technical career will be better than doing arts um yeah I, I feel so, yeah. <laughs> yeah so i got very interested in design because it's you know design was quite new when i was uh, 17 yeah. uh learning it in university and all that so at first i was thinking about making this kind of technical careers and then i went to paris to find a university and i was like these they have uh applied arts to technical careers. So yeah. and then I discovered that applied arts is a thing um, that is crazy, a crazy thing in Paris. And it can naturally happen. <laughs> yeah, but it sort of just all fell into place. That's wonderful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How about you, Melanie? Um, as for me, it's just kind of similar to NG. The thing is like uh, a bit like hair, like since I was a kid, I love the drawing stuff like this. But for me, it was like, oh, no, I want to keep art as OB, but I don't want it to be a job. And um, so I, my first studies were like, I went to an engineering school. I was studying uh, city planning. Uh -huh. uh, and then after three years, I realized like, oh, OK, this is like not really my stuff. And I was looking to make more like um, animation, so purely animation, like uh, 3D stuff, like moving characters and stuff like this. And, and so, so I am telling you. And, and um, I was, I was uh, uh, crazy. crazy. Oh, <laughs> There's a crazy, crazy echo. echo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 like, like I had some knowledge with this idea of, of making animation, animation but, but uh, uh, I really like, I can show up with really with my money. And, and uh, it's really late, late when, when uh, I was going to start the final project, but I really like that. Really yeah, like yeah oh that's wonderful um and what are you guys up to now i think you sort of briefly mentioned um what sort of careers you guys found yourselves into would you like to explain a little bit more what you've been doing with yourself since finishing school yeah yeah sure um, um i, I moved, moved to dublin, to dublin. Uh, um, and I found, I found a job, job, uh, job, uh, job, job. job. Um, it's been, been very, very different, different than, than working, working for a video game company. Uh, 
it's more of a thinking of the client, 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 more very different, very different experience. Very different different experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Um, just getting getting used, used to work with a big company, company from a friend, friend now, which is very, very exciting. exciting. Yeah. Um, um, very, very, very lucky. lucky. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. No, it's um, it's certainly a bit of a shock to the system getting your first job, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> How about you, Melanie? What are you up to? Uh, so for now, I'm working as a social artist in a small independent Yeah. So still in the first. Yeah. Basically, what I do. I do a lot with women in Swimmer, so I make like from the concept to the 3D modeling for the animation, it's a good thing for the profession. Yeah. And I think it's, I really like it to work on multi, like it's really, it's easy, like your dog, your side of the video. And yeah, I think it's quite cool. Lovely. Um, well, I'm really glad that you both, um, you know, found found your first step in the industry, you got your foot in the door now, and um, you know, it only gets easier. Or well, I shouldn't say easier, but it's, it gets a bit easier once you found your first foot in the door. So well done. That's um, obviously one of the hardest things to do. Um, what made you guys enter the rookie award, the rookie awards in the first place? Um, do you want to answer that or? <laughs> Do you want to yeah, 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 I, I think, think um, what, what was really cool, cool is the rookie awards. awards. It's, it's like, like you, can you can see like all the all the, all the work, work from uh, people from all over the world, world. And, and it's, it's not, not like just like your, your with, with your project, project on, on, on your country. country. It's, it's really like, like uh, sharing, sharing something with uh, so many people, people all around the world. And then I think this is really this kind of community feeling like to. See, see what, what everyone, everyone is capable of, it's like, like really thrilling and, and encouraging and, and like, the, I don't I know, know, I think it's really cool, cool to have like this, uh, this, this kind of thing. thing. That's wonderful. So it's really quite motivational and quite exciting, isn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> well, how did you hear about the rookies? Was it advertised at your school or was it just something you came across online? Yeah, yeah. Um, since, since we were meeting first, first years to <laughs> They, they told about the awards and the Yeah. Um, they um, kind of motivated us to uh, post our work, publish our work, share it, and um, try, you know, because we know what other people, people are doing. Work. And, and it's, it's always nice to recognize my appreciated and, and see that even though you're a student, uh, people, people are there, there to see what we do and what you create. So they they are very. The school was very proud to have some students who won some uh, awards already. So they were like, "You have to show your work and like um, this is going to be good for you." And honestly, it it is because as creators, you have to show your work. Otherwise, what do you do it for? You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, yeah. I'm so glad you guys um, entered, and obviously it's all paid. Well, it's all paid off for you because you guys took the winning title. Um, <laughs> so, in saying that, um, you know, next year we'll have the next group of entries coming in. Uh, what advice would you be able to give people entering that same category that you guys entered? Um, I Go think, ahead. I think um, one of the best advice I would give is like just make a really detailed presentation, like uh, going through all the process and stuff, because I think it's really interesting for people who will judge, but um, also like uh, for sometimes you have recruiter who just come uh, <laughs> who just come on the website and like look like for young talent. And it's really cool to see maybe like people might think, oh, it's cool to have the nicest shirt. Uh, people don't really care, but actually it's, it's really cool to see like how people manage to get what they have and it's also really nice to just share it for the rest of the community like uh, some people are like uh, so like people are still learning and uh, to see like uh, the process it's uh, really cool for them to learn from you 
but also for people who, who can't enter like school where um, or learn by themselves because they might not have the money to enter school or just like not have time to enter a school because they have a family and stuff like this and they want to reconvert and it's cool to having this really detailed presentation to say oh okay this is how they do it and stuff I can learn from this and uh, I think yeah this is like a like just don't be afraid to 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 share like all your process even if it just look bad and you're just ah it's just it's okay like it's the way you do it and like even the industry you just try and retry and you fail and it's okay it's how it work yeah the process is very interesting it helps a lot to see how you create your assets and how the the concept was created but also i would say to people to not overthink it too much uh because i also entered uh another rookie awards a while ago it was the combi um, oh, fan yeah. award, yeah. yeah. And as a texture artist, uh, so I did that. I, I didn't win anything, and only, honestly, I did it for the fun because uh, I thought it was a very nice contest, and I had the time, and I thought it was very good. And honestly, not overthinking it helped me a lot because during when I was present preparing the the posts and everything in the presentation, I was like, yeah, but this doesn't look as good as this other guy that's making this crazy van or whatnot. And, but no, don't overthink it. Just do your thing, have fun doing it and then post it because otherwise you're not going to post it. And that's not, that's not good. <laughs> oh, guys, no, honestly, um, both of you shared some really sound advice and it's um, pretty spot on in what I pass on to my students, right? Like it's, um, that thing, it's so easy to compare yourself with others. And I just tell people to, like, it, whilst it's great to look at other people's work for inspiration, you really need to focus on what you're doing um, because what you can bring to the table is just as good and it's just slightly different to someone else. You know, everyone has their own unique style and um, it's never going to be the same as someone else's. And um, the fact that, uh, Melanie, you're saying to, you know, you know add your... Um, you're working out and your uh, presentation alongside with your final product. And that honestly, that um, that really helps us rule people out as well, because if you have a fantastic project, but no breakdown, um, it really doesn't do you any favors because we want to be able to see what, um, what it is or how you created this stuff, right? Because we're interested. Um, we want to, you know, you make something really cool. <laughs> we want to see how you did it because we're always like constantly impressed by what you guys are doing every like, year in and year out. So thank you for that. That's some really sound advice and very clearly, um, you know, you guys were on top and um, yeah, it's so great. Um, I was hoping, so I've got a few more questions about your rookies entry. What I'm sort of thinking is um, perhaps uh, you could share your screen and show us a little bit about your game. And whilst you're showing us some behind the scenes um, work, perhaps you could tell us just a little bit more about your entry, um, your maybe about the story and um, your inspiration as well. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Yeah, with it. All right, so um, share screen. I think it's this one. Wait a second. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. So I think um, the first thing that could be interesting to show would be like uh, the really, this is the stuff I didn't put on, um, on the entry, but like really early on the version, we had like, um, we had like the first step of our project, we were thinking like instead of having a, a minion for the goddess, at first we wanted a human, who came in a castle to stall something, but like the story was really, really complicated. And we were like, okay, let's just erase this completely. And like the stuff is like, as we were making the project, we were also uh, trying to figure out like the story, the universe, stuff like this. And because we were um, like, for me, I um, when I entered the, the group project, I didn't know much about my uh, my teammates, like uh, Angie. I didn't know her for too much, and it was the same for other people. And what really got us together was, uh, so this is like um, the first concept for uh, Mori, the main character. And what really got us together was our, um, our shared interest for uh, indie horror game like uh, Little Nightmare and Limbo. And uh, maybe you can see in the project that uh, all our lighting are really inspired by a little nightmare. 
And then from this, we were like, uh, okay, so what kind of story are we going to create? We were like, uh, okay, let's talk about what we all of us like. And when we didn't want to go like, uh, oh, we like, we like this video game and we want to make the same art direction as this video game. We were more like, okay, this is our final project. Let's just, maybe we won't have any other chance to like make something really personal and cool. So let's just like go for it and try something new. So um, from this, like everyone tried to, to find what we really, but what we were really into. And uh, at some point when we were building the game, we got closer to the Art Nouveau style and the, and the Gothic uh, architecture style because it was um, it was really resonating with the, the theme of, uh, of being a, a goddess with a um, really gracious uh, with a curve and uh, all the thematic of hair. And, um, and so we were like really focusing on this, uh, those kind of aspects. Um, and so from this, we were like trying to figure out, uh, okay, now we have to mix architecture and um, uh, Gothic architecture and our nouveau style. So we were like, <laughs> so like we oh, <laughs> any reference like on our station and stuff like that. So, and this is something we really wanted to avoid. Like, we were trying like not to take any uh, reference that was already existing, so we try uh, to look for a real, a real reference, and uh, we spend a lot of time like uh, trying to iterate in concept. Like it was really, really rough. It was really sketchy ideas, but like the thing is, like we wanted to make a quick 3D to quickly see the result and see oh, is it working, is it not working, and like you have this, this kind of really sketchy stuff. And then at some point when we put in 3D, we were like, oh, okay, that doesn't really look good at all. So we were like, mm -hmm. okay, back to back to like uh, the concept. And for example, paint this guy looks cool. <laughs> so many yeah. paint overs. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, we find a lot of uh, back and forth and uh, stuff to like try to find a new gun. And this kind of concept, it's quite something that we have uh, right now in game. So like most current fall that we have, I'm going to hide uh, this. It's almost close to what we have right now, but then like each one from the team like took uh, took their part and uh, some people will say, okay, I'm going to focus on the on the design for the wall. Some people say, okay, I'm going to focus on the design for uh, the mechanism, but which is uh, later in the game. And so like this, we try to continue research and find a pipeline also that could be efficient because it was a really big environment, so we were like, okay, we need to make a lot of assets in a big space, like really quickly. So, so this kind of stuff. I don't know, Angie, if you want to talk about. Uh... Uh, well, certainly mixing Gothic and Art Nouveau was a huge thing, and it's the theme of the whole environment. Uh, so first, can, even the materials, we didn't really know how to mix them together. It was stone for Gothic, and then for Art Nouveau, it was more metal and wood. Uh, so Melanie really helped us uh, with that because she had a lot of references from this museum uh, that was an Art Nouveau museum, and then she she made uh she really was our art director uh she made this like <laughs> image of how the shapes could be mixed together and kind of the rules of the, the aesthetic that we wanted and that helped a lot um for everything for the whole environment to create everything all the assets and modular architecture uh it helped a lot and in the end it looks amazing i mean um i didn't work a lot on this part specifically i worked more in the interior part but i remember jan and loic and mathilde they were they were giving it all with these platforms and these high ceilings and the columns uh i did help a bit with the textures uh so yeah i remember uh all the modular architecture was <laughs> so intense making modular assets is uh, very hard that you have to really think about it what you're gonna do plan it ahead it was very very interesting God, everything is just so intricate there's just so much to look at and so much detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true 
so yeah this is the part i can probably talk a little more about uh so i was a texture artist an environment artist here so the wood was my texture was my jam in this project i made the, the floor the wood floors the ceilings uh a lot of the wood textures and uh honestly it was it was really fun to make but like right now with a little time that has passed uh, i think it's a little monochromatic and i think we had that when we presented the project they told us it might it is a little monochromatic on the inside and they're they're right they're right <laughs> so that's the thing that if i could remake the game that's the thing i would change uh so yeah there's a lot of different levels in the environment there the the environment that it's sized as the moira and then there's the environment that is sized as nori and then there's this kind of in-between assets that are there to mix the whole thing together mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of like the textures and stuff, um, we just have a question come through. Um, how mm -hmm. did you go about creating them? Um, it's like, were they all procedural textures or? Um... Uh, so uh, I use a substance designer uh, yep. for all, right. all my textures Great. Uh, so because we wanted uh, um, modular architecture. So we needed tileable, tileable textures. Yeah. And then uh, some assets are unique, of course, like the, the altar, as I call it. Uh, and the, yeah, all the textures where I did them in Substance Designer, uh, mm -hmm. and added a lot of as much detail as possible. And then I did the uh, iterations for each texture. So there was like, a, a more used version of them. So we could blend them in game with masks. So there's a yeah. little bit of perfect paint on the floor. So you can see some places are more jagged. Of course, there's a decal, normal decals and all that. Mm -hmm. It's been it's very successful. Everything looks fantastic. <laughs> yes, the thing about the um, about the monochromatic, it's like it was uh, something we it was a direction we chose early. We wanted something like really, like you know, in Arnovo you have really a lot of um, like the st stained glass. Is it how you call it? Like the glass with all the color and stuff. Like yeah, you know, also glass, in, the, yeah. in um, yeah, also in Gothic. Um, cathedral and stuff like this you have like the also the tainted glass and stuff like this but for us in for direction science or character we're more aimed towards like um the uh, the bombix um the bombix maurice or the the silk worm uh, which produced silk it was uh since it was like it has some color restriction we wanted to keep this in this in our environment and in order to prevent to have like something really too monochromatic we try to play a lot with like having different kind of roughness metallic so even if we had wood uh, with really um, something really rough to counterbalance we try to put like some copper or some uh, we don't really have any gold but like um, marble mm. or stuff like this just to have like this this difference and not just to have a really plain roughness everywhere but to have like a mm -hmm. specular that just pop up from time to time and uh, it kind of helped to not having something too. Yeah. Uh, and think. just a, a little detail because I don't say this, Loic is going to kill me probably. Um, so there's <laughs> also, we use a lot of trim sheets uh, for the insides, um, the, the inside parts. Uh, so all the big uh, um, mobile, how do you say, furniture that you can see, the cupboards and everything, is all one trim sheet which is yeah, very was, uh, uh, good for uh, the specs because it's going to be very optimized. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I suppose, um, you know, in creating games, you do have to be quite mindful of all of that, don't you? Very yeah. different for visual effects. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's also, like, really important because, like, we have this thematic of uh, hair and, like, silk and uh, all this stuff like this. Like having um, this kind of, uh, I'm showing with my screen, but you, you can see my finger. Like having in your screen or um, the hair, so having like this deterring effect, it's really expensive in engine. So we had to be careful to have like, to have like, um, to optimize our game so it could still run with decent FPS. I don't know how many FPS I have, I have right now, but it's like, it's okay. I'm like, yeah, oh, it's uh, switching. Yeah. 
and so like we have to be really careful like it's it's because in the end the school was asking for us to like in the end you have to make a, a gameplay video that you will show to people you don't have to make a game but for us so objectives like it was okay in the future we're gonna work in in real engine uh, either in video games or like uh, for uh, for some other industry so i think it's really important for even for ourselves to learn that uh, to optimize just a whole game and uh, it was the same for me for the character when I made the hair, especially for the goddess, because like she was really, really tall. Mm -hmm. I really need to be careful to, okay, I have to, I have to make something that looks good, but also optimize. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something we, we have to be really, really careful. Of course. Oh, that's really, really important. It's such, a, it's such a good skill to have as well. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the story of the gameplay and what? Oh, you know, yeah. How did you come up with it? Um, so the story, um, it's it's kind of like the art direction. We kind of build build it like while we were working on it. So um, we wanted the first thing we wanted to do, like it's we wanted some kind of uh, atmospheric all game, like Little Nightmare. It was really our main inspiration, and. I don't, I think what we went from is like why we wanted to work on the thematic of hair and like we wanted a story about um, someone who ran away from a threat, <laughs> something really basic like that. And uh, and from step by step, we were like, oh, look, uh, the Morai uh, from the mythology, they are really cool, like the, the three sisters who take control over like uh, the human life. And this is so, I think, um from my point of view like i think mythologic are really great because it resonates with a uh, with a lot of people like it's it's weird but like mostly the thematic are really like something that still is today yeah it's uh even it's, it's like oh okay we of course like yeah, there's not three goddess and like but like i think this thematic of controlling your life of uh, having someone else having your fate being decided for you like it's something like like That's people are really yeah stuff like this like uh, i think a good example is for example the covid it's something like <laughs> it, i never i mean it's a great example it's like uh it's not something we have control over and um i think it's really if, if this kind of thematic in mythology really still resonate with people today with a lot of people yeah so mm -hmm. so we were yeah we were like going from this mythology and then we were like uh, okay we were we're gonna create a story about like you as a player you're gonna control a minion um who work for a goddess uh, of the life which is a uh, nona in the mythology and then you're gonna take control over this character and your goal will be to to try to escape to try to gain freedom from this goddess as much as you can so you're gonna need to go through all this uh all this little uh, workshop and like this giant castle with giant mechanisms that just take uh, her hair to which leads to make life and uh, all this idea of um having this goddess that produce uh, the the threat uh, of life and and yeah we we tried to talk about this. I don't know if we really succeed. Like it was like uh, I think we did because the whole castle looks like a, well, <laughs> the whole castle looks like a, this giant factory of, uh, of like thread, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really <laughs> it makes you think a lot about this uh, kind of like. Uh, um, how did you call it? We learned about this in school, you know, when Ford automated uh, the construction of cars, you know, so it kind of becomes uh, rushed and it's like, we need to create more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So the castle becomes huge and then the tools become huge and then she has all these minions working for her. And then suddenly one of them doesn't want to work anymore because okay. you are controlling it and you're like, I need to escape this place because that woman is scary and crazy you know <laughs> <laughs> no well, i think it's um you portrayed your story really quite well and it's um i think it's quite relevant to a lot of things that are happening in the real world today 
I would say so. Um, all right. No, that's a, like I've I've really I'm really enjoying seeing the gameplay. It's um, really quite fantastic. <laughs> Everything's moving all the time. That was one of the things that we wanted. Like everything needs to be moving all the time. Yeah, it's actually some something like um, that. We like having an environment. Like even if you don't have a character, but having an environment that just really move and like having ethics or like really having this lively thing. It really brings uh, your environment to life. Like it's. Uh, How many levels did you create? Did you have um, much of an extended gameplay in your creation? Oh, fun um, fact. <laughs> it's a fun fact. Yeah, uh, we, actually, uh, yeah go, uh, go on. Go. Do you want to go on? Try go no, on? go ahead. Uh, so actually, we thought about making the exterior of the castle, um, but we threw the idea because we didn't have the time uh we had already been working a lot and it was a huge project to make also the outside of the castle so there's two different two or three different levels i don't know we divided it mostly on uh by areas so it was the moira's place uh that looks like a cathedral um then there's the in the the workshops and then there's the mechanisms and the platforms uh, and then she was supposed to go outside and see the castle, but that we didn't, we just didn't have the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is, at the end, so when there is like the, this white flash, we we wanted at first to have the character like go outside the castle and have this view of like this giant castle machinery that was working, like having this feeling, this feeling of like, even if the character just, just escaped from like a big threat, there was still so much to go on. There was like so much to to just escape this really, really big thing. And uh, but uh, yeah, we we cut it. Because... But the story is not over. It was supposed to give a sense of like there's more adventures to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But once again, like uh, the COVID eats and we didn't have time. And like, yeah. we, we were, were more like, OK, again. let's just yeah. make a Polish game and just let's not crunch our time just like like I think and... that's I think that's really important. Um, it's almost like some advice for the future as well. Um, you don't you really don't want to bite off more than what you can chew in a reasonable amount of time, right? Like you, it's much better to just do one component really, really well than have lots and lots of different levels, but everything's half finished. So I think you made the I think you made the right decision. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's also important to like um, when you when you make a project to compose your production with your team, like for us, we had four environment artists and one character artist. So we wanted to have this really big environment, but like for some other people, if you have like, for example, uh, three character artists and only like uh, two environment artists, it's great to make like something more like a Cluedo or something where like you always, you are just in a small place and you have like multiple character because like it's, I think it's important to not force your team to produce something that they might, might not have able to do. Like it's it's also also like more healthy for your team because they're gonna do what they enjoy to do, and you're not, not gonna tell to your character artist, okay, now you have to make some environment because we need to have some environment. Like I, I mean, for students, of course, and um, and yeah, just be sure to adapt your production for your mm -hmm. project and not the other way around. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it was also for us because we, at the end, we wanted to have uh, something really cool for our portfolio. Like it's, it was also really important to find a job at the end. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, and also something we were proud of. Not only, not only something that, you know, I'm quite proud of what we made. And, and I, I think it's, it has its mistakes and everything. It's a student project, but I, I had a great time working with my team and Honestly, I have to give a lot of thanks to Melanie because we were four environment artists and we were looking what kind of game we could make. And then Melanie was like, I want to be a character artist. And we were like, thank God, because we had no one. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just like, the, so the four of them, the four environment artists that were like all together and was, at first I was with um, with a group, uh, with another group, but 
with the kind of project where we're aiming to do, it was not really my style. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't, I really want to make something different and stuff. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna, it's, I'm gonna leave my friends and try to find new people, even if I don't really know them, but it's a risky thing, but mm -hmm. I'm, be worth a shot. Oh, <laughs> and, <that's luckily>. amazing. <laughs> and I was I really a scary thing to do in school as well to go against like, um, you know, to move out of your friendship group. And it's not nothing against them or anything. It's just, yeah, yeah. Um, you've got to make sure that when you're, you know, when you're coming out of school, that you come out with something that you can use for your portfolio. Like, I quite often tell people um, to pair with people that have different skills. To your own you know you want to yeah. have a group of people with all different skills and then that way you can all contribute something quite different and get something different out of the project yeah yeah and it's also really cool because sometimes you have different um you have different kind of level in uh, each group even if you are not friends with people but it's like some people are really good some people are a bit less uh, a bit less skill or they need more time to to do stuff and even if you're not yeah. friends with those people, just pairing with people who, are, who have like more knowledge on stuff or like who really enjoy a, a more technical side and stuff, you can really learn from those people and just really being pushed forward. And, uh, mm -hmm. and like, yes, yeah, I feel I learned, I learned so much uh, working in this project. It was crazy. I, I was more uh, some kind of like, prop artist at first and then I had to do level design because we all had to do it at some point and I was like next to Loic or Jan and they were like oh yeah like this and that and that I was like oh my god this is crazy <laughs> <laughs> it was very interesting yeah well, I mean you've obviously learned a lot and you've, uh, you've led by example I can see you know the product yeah. is incredible must be very proud of it I am very proud. <laughs> it's weird coming back to it, like, you know, a month later or weeks later and looking at it with fresh eyes. I always find that, you know, when you've been staring at something for a year, it's like, oh, my God, I hate it. But then, like, you yeah. come back to it and then, I don't know, you really appreciate yeah. it. Are you finding it's that? It's a part of you. Yeah. It's become, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's not something, like, really, like, uh, for me, it was the, the, the wooden texture, like, like it's really like I forgot completely forgot about this, but now I'm like, oh, this is actually looks really good and stuff like this. It's yeah, it's really weird. Like, uh... yeah, that's oh, stunning. Yeah, managing all the so we use a PBR pipe PBR pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So managing all the roughnesses and speculars and like. Because you have you want everything to look real, but also you want some parts to get your attention a little bit more. So the silk, the thread had to be a little bit shinier. The metals had to be a little bit shinier. So uh, you know when you walk, I have this like kind of speck light coming from some uh, metallic parts. So it gives this feeling of uh, of oh that is like a different texture mm -hmm. and. You don't really look at it, but it's there, and it adds a lot to the scene. That was yeah. that was a whole a whole thing. It took us a lot of time to get it right. Oh, 100%. Like um, making sure, I mean, even in a stylized environment such as this, you want to make sure that the materials that you're creating are still based off of real world materials, because you know it just gives it this depth um, and this interest that you know draws your eye to it as well. Hmm. So it's, yeah, it's really quite beautiful. And all of your materials, um, they do look stunning. They do, they are um, beautiful style. <laughs> Thank you. And it, even I'm looking at the environment now, it's so intricate. Like, yeah. wow, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, I also forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, oh it's, uh, Is that it's a modular? Uh, Did you create a few like key pieces and then put it all together or is that uh, all you need? So yeah. Um, some of it, especially the arcs and the columns, are modular, and then some assets are unique but repeat, repeated around the, the circle. So um, they there's there's more, let's say, sculpted parts and more uh, just modeled 
with a nice texture around them. If I, yeah. if I explain myself correctly. Like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, you can see because we didn't want everything to look like that wall, you know, like this one specifically on the right. Uh, we needed the area to breathe too. So it needed to have parts that were less charged. And those are the parts that are more built and less uh, decorated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... Someone in the audience has just said, uh, yet to see anything that doesn't look like it's from a AAA game environment. So what a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stunning. I, f I feel that like I could look at it forever and find something new. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, um, we really had great, um, great uh, teacher who like really give us good input, like how to build um like the scenery because we have a lot of curves so like you need to be careful like your curve just like are making a, um, a line that just like attract your eyes but like doesn't lead always lead somewhere and mm -hmm. uh, like i don't know if you can see my mouse yeah so having like yeah. all those continuation uh, of curves something like this yeah like, it's uh yeah i think it's something we like I think those kind of curve that just follow together, that just answer to each other. And it's also something you yeah. you see a lot through in Art Nouveau is you have like this, um, you have like a, um, a furniture or like a wall or something. And all the curves, they are here to support the global um, global shape, but they are not like, a, they're not just here to decorate. They are mostly here to support the shape. And I think mm -hmm. this is, this is why we try when we try to make the Arno and the Gothic architecture of, um, to yeah, try to keep those curve in the in the Gothic architecture, but also with the Arno how it's how it's uh, built to to come support uh, once again those curved line. Uh, mm -hmm. It really draws your eye, and I can see that there's like some curves that are curving around, and it sort of continues on into the silk or to the um, weaving down the bottom and then everything has a flow and a line to it. It's um, it's it's something I do when I draw, you know, like you always try and have a line that sort of takes it through the character or through the, yeah, no, it's, see it there, it's beautiful. Um, I was going to ask a little bit about the characters as well. Um, they're such a unique and quite cool design. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um... So for uh, for the character, so for both of our design, I was uh, mostly focused on the so as I said before on the silkworm, um, the the worm that produces the, the silk, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's really particular because they really have this. Uh, I don't have any reference. Oh, maybe here. Um, Because they have this really uh, restrict, restricted palette. I don't have the, mm -hmm. the silk one. And I think it was a good thing because uh, so the, the silk, um, it's produced uh, through cocoon. So it resonates with the thematic of life. And uh, so it was something that was in our story. And um, and also the the theme of having the thread and uh, stuff like this and i took some reference uh, from so from the people who used to work on the silk so they were mostly uh poor women um, or mostly children actually because they have small finger to work on the mm -hmm. on the threads and uh that's why i took most reference from them um I also took uh, some reference for um, for the main character, so Mori. Uh, some uh, really rough material because I really wanted to keep this feeling of having um, a character which is uh, with poor material, poor uh, like contrary to the the goddess who was really uh, having silk and like a really uh, mm -hmm. thin uh, thin clothing. I don't know, just say that like a, yeah, like. A, She's more royal. More yeah, yeah, more like higher shiny. year up in the <laughs> hierarchy, yeah. And uh, and so yeah, this is like 
I had this really long process where I was, at first I wanted to, to have a really, I'm gonna go through our diabetes here. I wanted to have a really simple character because like I knew the main character will be a copy from the other minions. So what I was trying to do is having something really simple because it's kind of like in a limbo or in Little Nightmare, you have like really both character who, who just repeats. And it's like, I don't want it, the main character to be the focus, to be like, a, oh, you have to, to project yourself in the, in the character. It was not my goal. It was more like a, you, you enjoy taking control of this creature, but that's it. And it just repeats itself. And if you put too much detail into a character that's going to repeat, I was scared, but it's, it will be really noisy or something like this. So mm -hmm. I, I felt this really, really a uh, simple idea. And then uh, some, uh, some teacher came and they just told me, uh, you know, your character are cool, but like, if you're going to put this in your portfolio, it's not going to be good enough. And <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I have to make a choice. It's either I make a character that sells the game or I make a character which can solve the, solve the game, but which, which can also help me to like having something cool and stuff. So yeah. I took this middle step to like, okay, I'm going to try to, to iterate again and like, uh, really try to find something, uh, a bit more intricate and more interesting to look also, because when you work on a third person game, you have to be, to be careful that your, your character is always on screen. So you need to be careful. It's, uh, it's interesting to look. Um, mm -hmm. And as for Nona, so the goddess, it was kind of the same at first. When um, when we were talking with the environment artist, I remember, uh, so it was mostly Loic who told me, uh, oh yeah, it would be cool if you could keep this goddess like, like uh, something really, really nice looking and stuff. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to draw something. And, and it's also because like, uh, I didn't really know the people yet in my group. So I was like, kind of trying something. And so do you like it or you don't like it? Like, <laughs> it was really something step by step to build. So at first I came with this. And uh, once again, I think um, I had the feedback where people were like, uh, okay, that's cool, but you could like push it more, like just, just, just go for it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it again. So. I tried to make another iteration. Um, where is it? So this is actually the design that you, you see at the end. I was like, uh, at some point I was trying some iteration and um, I remember, I think it was, uh, I think it was, uh, or, um, I, I don't know who it was, but I remember someone at some point come to me and he'd say, oh, just put a giant butterfly on their face or something <laughs> yeah. like this. I was like, oh, it's, true. it's a good idea. So I tried to like go go ahead and make like a, like something which, which just links the skin with the, the butterfly wings, like not just to have a random butterfly on our face, <laughs> but actually something which could kind of make sense. Yeah. And I think it also worked because in our story, the goddess, it's not really nice. Like it's just like a, a cold, uh, <laughs> it's just like a really uh called a cold person we just use minions to achieve our goal to just create life it's just what she does and having to remove the eyes i think it's uh i think it works because i think eyes are really important when you look at someone because it shows they like gave empathy her. right what yeah. it it, yeah, it, it reads her of empathy like you, yeah, you cannot empathize exactly. with her anymore yeah. mm -hmm. and i think it's kind of why we are afraid of spiders because they have eyes everywhere. So we were like, I can project myself on this thing. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it, I suppose it kind of worked like this. So 100%. I think it was, a, it was a cool idea. And, yeah, uh, it, it leans into beauty horror. That is a whole thing too. I love, I love beauty horror. It's a, <laughs> very disturbing. <laughs> Yeah, well, like you said, it, it's she's really quite beautiful, but quite scary as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I must say, I love the, I must say, I love the um the workers' eyes. They're very moth-like, like being so dark and um angular. They're really quite beautiful. <laughs> I also try like to 
like to put her really big ends, like they are quite uh, big compared to like a, a head. Because mm -hmm. when you when they try to reach you through the through the workshop, they are like they need to appear like really some some kind of big grid, something really harmful. So yeah, they are quite uh, detailed. The hands, they're they're mm -hmm. very beautiful hands. Yeah, because they're like because the player will get really close to it. So right now the shadow are kind of. Uh, oh yeah, so it's still working. Uh, mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's not really. Well, it's, it's still a bit buggy, but yeah, I, I tried like to put detail uh, into the skin mm -hmm. because they were they would be really close to the player, and also like for the the polygons, it's like they're really high density here, and here, and yeah. also some some stuff like putting uh, bracelets here. And here it will help to hide the seam, but also if you wanted to create a LOD, it was important to like uh, having something that could uh, where you can separate a different part of the of the body if you if you wanted to load a different uh, level of detail of the character. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, thank you for sharing, guys. Um, well, it looks like we're running out of time, but um, yeah. I just wanted to say. Um, but no, that, that's been absolutely fantastic. I've really thoroughly enjoyed seeing all of that behind the scenes. It's a real treat to, um, you know, to see you guys walk through, um, walk through the game level and it's, you know, more than what, what we've seen before. So I hope, um, everyone in the audience really enjoyed it as well. And, um, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I might just finish off by just asking, you know, what is your plans for the next couple of years? Mm, uh, that's oh, a hard okay. question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to stay here living, living in Dublin, um, yeah. buy a house at some point, I suppose. <laughs> and then uh, I, I got a chance to work in a big company, so I think I'm going to just like build a yeah. career. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sounds exciting. I guess, you know, just keep working hard and, you know, building up your career and what you're doing. Yeah. And uh, keeping up with uh, new technologies and, yeah. and real time rendering because that's a huge thing in everywhere, actually. Yeah. So, 100%. Hmm. Is that a similar sort of story to you, Melanie? Uh, yeah. I'm going to try like to <laughs> keep working where I'm working. Like, uh, for a small indie independent uh, studio, it's uh, it's always like uh, you're not sure where you're going. Uh, <laughs> it's always like uh, if you're gonna have money to continue or not. So <laughs> hopefully it will still continue because I I really enjoy like working on small team and like like giving your input and stuff like this. Like for me, if I can continue working in a good environment where like people like uh, care to share and like take care of each other, that would be. That would be really cool. Like something just simple, like having an healthy environment. <laughs> that would be really cool, and especially in video games, like because it's really cool. Oh. To work on video oh, games. That's wonderful, guys. <laughs> um, all right, well, we'll wrap it up there. But um, thanks so much for joining. And if you have any questions in the future, or feel free to reach out. Um, we're always here to help. And you know, I'm going to follow you on Art Station and follow you on the socials. Because, you know, <laughs> can't wait to see some more work from you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, God. thank you for having us. <laughs> no yeah, worries. it was very nice to be here and be able to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been my absolute pleasure. Um, all right, well, enjoy the rest of your day or evening or whatever time it is over there. <laughs> no, yeah. it's early day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really early. Thank you. See you, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>